I'm Stuart, and today we're going to talk about um, staying safe online and what you can do to keep yourself safe. Hi, I'm Sally, a project worker at Skills of People. Um, yeah, we were thinking about how the internet's been so useful, especially during lockdown, um, how it's helped people to keep in touch with family and friends, and people have been able to do their shopping online. Um, but we've had a request to explain a little bit about how people can stay safe online. So we've um, had a chat with Janine, who works for Northumbria Police, and she's answered some questions um, about how we can try and stay safe online. So hope you find this helpful. I'm Janine Turnbull. I'm a police officer with the Central Community Engagement Team for Northumbria Police. So that covers the Newcastle and Gateshead area. Is there any information about, about me I shouldn't share or put online? Um, when you put information online, a, a bit of a benchmark that I use is that it's something that everyone can potentially see. So I wouldn't share any personal information. We even advise not to always use your full name until you absolutely trust what you're doing online. So if you are not happy putting what you are about to write on a newspaper for everyone to read, don't put it online. So for definite, your full name, your date of birth, your address, and details relating, financial details relating to your bank account as, as, as a very basic, but any personal information, so information about your family, your mother's maiden name, for example, passwords, PIN numbers, anything that really is private that you don't want the whole world to know, do not share online. How can I protect myself online from scams? Online scams is something we are seeing an awful lot of at the moment across lockdown. Um, when scammers tend to know when people are feeling vulnerable, that means when they're open to some sort of attack, be it online or be it face to face. And lockdown and, and isolation and this coronavirus period is a really vulnerable time for people. People are low, um, people are feeling a bit desperate and people are short of money as well. So we are seeing lots of different scams. And we're even not just seeing online scams, we're seeing digital scams where people are getting text messages. Basically, do not trust everything that you get. And if you get emails from a bank and it asks you to click on a link or to send bank details or anything of this sort of nature, don't do it. Talk to someone you trust first, such as um, someone from Skills for, for People, um, your, your personal assistant, a trusted family member. You'd be more than welcome to use the live chat on the Northumbria Police website. You can do that really easily. Our advice is to take five. So that is take five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, before you respond. Scammers will try and make you panic. They'll try and get you to act quickly. So you click that link mm -hmm. and you could be opening your computer to an attack or you could be leaving yourself vulnerable if you give bank details or any personal information. So take five, check it out. There's no rush at all. And um, ring your bank, ring the company in question and check it out with them. They'd be more than happy to do that. So that is the way to protect yourself. Don't be rushed. Take time. Stay calm. What should I do if I think I have been scammed online? The first thing to do um, in this type of situation is to reach out to someone um, and to reach out to someone official like the police if you think you've been scammed. So you can do that, like I've just said, on live chat. So you can Google or use any search engine to search for Northumbria Police and there will be a live chat function and you can get that on your mobile phone. And that means you can chat immediately with someone. You can't report crimes that way, but they can give you some basic advice and signpost you to the right people. If you aren't confident using the internet, you can also um, text us and I will make sure that those text numbers are available 
or you can text 999 if you feel it is an emergency, or you can call 101. You can also contact Action Fraud, or if you were a bit nervous about contacting the police yourself, you could contact one of your support um, staff, personal assistant, someone from Skills uh, to do that for you, and they will help you with that on your on your behalf. So the, the most important thing is to reach out for help and make sure you report it. Please don't be embarrassed because these things happen to everybody. Um, and scammers are very, very clever and they are very, very convincing. So don't be embarrassed and you won't get into trouble. Just tell someone and we will help you. What is cyberbullying and, and online hate crime? Hate crime um, in any form is, is not acceptable and will not be tolerated by Northumbria Police. And hate crime is when someone targets you because of who you are. Uh, they are hostile, they are violent, they are, are aggressive, and they use prejudice and discrimination against you. In this situation, we would be talking about um, disability-related hate crime. So if someone targets you because of who you are, because of your learning disability, because you have a disability, it can also be because of the colour of your skin, um, because of your faith, um, because of your age, your sexuality, your gender identity, alternative subcultures. So someone targeting you for being you. Um, and cyberbullying is when people are nasty and unkind and bully you over the cyber networks. So that means online. And it is just as harmful and just as serious as people doing that to you face to face. And especially when we are maybe isolating more and we are in the house more and things are really uncertain, if someone is alone and they are constantly being bombarded by vile, nasty, unkind, illegal messages, it can really damage people's mental health. So this is why we take online bullying and cyberbullying and online hate crime very, very seriously. What should I do if I'm being bullied online again there's a bit of a common theme here and it's hard for me to tell you what you should do um, but I would strongly advise and urge you to reach out for support so reach out to someone talk to someone and try and get that reported to the police you might not want to do that. And we've discussed some of the options around how you can report. It's exactly the same as the advice I gave around scams. You can always talk to a member of our team. So you can always reach out to me. We also have safe reporting centres and safe places across the region. Um, I know that might be a little bit difficult to get to with isolation because places are closed. But you can still reach out to those people online or via the telephone or you can report to us online if you don't want to make that phone call. So the most important thing to do if you feel someone is making you feel awful because of what they're saying online, or even if they're saying something about somebody else, or maybe they're making comments about disabled people in general, Asian people in general, we're seeing a lot of vile comments about black Asian and minority ethnic groups at the moment. There's a lot of vile comments about refugee and asylum seekers. We've had a trend of there being really unkind comments about the disabled community around the time of Brexit, as well as racial hate crime. So we're seeing a lot of this online. If people are making even general comments that offend you and upset you, they can be reported as well. Or if they're making comments about a friend, you can report that on their behalf. So reach out and make sure you tell someone um, and, and our team are there to support you and we are there throughout lockdown um, if people ring and report a hate crime in any way our team will reach out to you and make sure you get that extra support we're not there to pressurize people to give a statement at all we're there to make sure that you are okay and we can signpost you to other organizations and we can speak um, to people on your behalf as well and we can make sure victims first, Northumbria, are involved so they can give you that holistic and bespoke approach to, to support as well. So the most important person is you and that you're, you're safe and well and, and talk to someone about it. What is online grooming? 
So grooming is a little bit of a strange word. And sometimes when I talk to all communities about grooming, they think it's like um, having your hair done or having your eyebrows done, because it is a bit of a tricky word. It's a word that police officers and social workers use quite a lot and, and statutory bodies use a lot, but it's, it's rather confusing. So grooming is when someone essentially targets someone with the aim of exploiting them in some way. And often um, it's sexual exploitation. So exploitation basically means using someone, using someone in a negative way, manipulating someone to get something that they want. So often it is for sex and for sexual purposes, but it can also be for financial purposes. Um, it can be to make people do, do jobs for them without paying them properly. So it's using them really. Exploiting is to use someone in a really negative way. And so grooming is trying to prepare that person and manipulate that person and use them so they can exploit them and get what they want. Now, we've also seen grooming in terms of trying to use people for extreme purposes like extremism in terms of terrorism and violence. And that's often a lot of the work that we see across Northumbria is right-wing extremism. So it's white people who have quite nasty thoughts about people of other races and other cultures and often disabled people as well. Um, so it basically is using someone. Um, they might promise things, they might promise gifts, they might promise qualifications, they might promise friendship, they might promise parties, they might promise good times, but really they want to use you to get what they want. Um, often as well, and sometimes within the learning disability community, people will use um, people for sexual purposes and they will take advantage of people for some sort of sexual gain. And that is really worrying for us. And that can happen online. Um, and, it, and it's hard because obviously people do make strong friendships online. But I would just be very, very careful with the information you give people and with the messages you receive from people. A friend doesn't bombard you and harass you with messages. And a friend doesn't ask you to send inappropriate photos, naked photos, inappropriate information, sexual information. A friend doesn't ask for those things in, online. So just be very, very careful. And if at any point you feel like someone is pressurizing you to do something or to say something you don't want to do, or if they're promising you things that seem absolutely amazing and you want to go and meet up with them because it sounds great, Again, just go back to the scamming advice. Take five and talk to someone about it because these people are strangers. If you wouldn't say or do these things with a stranger in person, for example, in the middle of the street or in a park, or if you wouldn't write these messages on a newspaper or a magazine for everyone to see, don't do it online. Um, and please be very careful if people are offering you um, offering you gifts and wanting to meet up in person because that is a real worry for us. And who can I ask for help if I am worried about online grooming? Yeah, like, like I said, please talk to someone. And again, don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel silly. The groomers will often tell you to keep things secret because you'll get into trouble. That is, that is manipulation and that is lies. You will never get into trouble for talking to someone about something you are concerned and worried and scared about because we know the bad cases that have happened which were, which I've just discussed where adults with learning disabilities oh, oh. adults with learning disabilities they have been conned they have been exploited and manipulated they've been promised things They've been promised jobs and work and money and nice mobile phones and iPads and Vivian Westwood shoes, for example. And they've gone to meet someone and they've had all their paperwork and passports and everything. And they've had them taken off them and they've been forced to work in not very nice conditions. And that is something called modern slavery. And 
people do groom and exploit people online for those purposes as well. So they use that person to get what they want, to get labor and work for free. And it's not okay. It's not something to be embarrassed about. You are actually really strong to say that you need some help and support. And we will take that very seriously. Very, very seriously. There are lots of things we can do to support you. If you aren't happy reaching out to the police directly, either over the phone or online, talk to someone like Sally, talk to someone like Stuart, they will contact the police on your behalf. There's also lots of online um, services and internet specific services that will help you as well. There's the Modern Slavery Society, there's the Safer Internet Society. And I know Friends Action Northeast locally are doing lots of stuff um, around internet safety. So there are lots of resources, but ultimately reach out to the police. And be careful what you share online. Be careful about friendships, even if you are feeling low and lonely. Reach out to people like Stay Connected and Skills for People and all the work that Stu and Sally and, and Stephen are doing. Reach out to those friendship groups and the groups that you trust. Mm. Um, and we are always here. We'll, the police will be here for you throughout this time. Just to finish off, because we have talked about a lot of of scary things and inappropriate things and sexual things as well, that language we, we maybe don't like using. It's just to confirm that the internet is a really positive place. It's helped us so much across the periods of lockdown, across isolation. It's helped everyone stay in touch with each other. WhatsApp and Facebook, they're brilliant services for sharing photos and sharing videos and having fun times. It's helped me as a police officer do my job because I've been able to have team meetings online. But like everything, there are some negative sides and there's some bad sides and there's just information we need to be aware of so we can use the internet safely and use it positively and make sure that we are safe. Thanks. I hope that information that um, we've shared is helpful and is able to allow you and, and help you have a really positive experience online and to stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up very soon and chat about some of the topics that are important to you and how the police can help and support. So keep sharing your ideas and um, stay safe and be kind to each other. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.